had a job to complete and everything else that we did during the season revolved around it. From the first practice that we had till the moments right before the game. It was winning a national championship. Nothing else would have sufficed. Nothing lower. And there's nothing to be higher than that. It was just it was just a feeling I've never had. Like it's just everything that I've put in that this team's put in together. And it's like it finally comes out to what you want. All the hours, months of like everything you've done. It's great. Um, Bez always says that this is the mountaintop and we climbed it. Now the younger guys have to build a uh, palace on top of it. Ever since we were freshmen, Mr. Roth, he's been saying that this is a special group and that we just need to put the work in and it'll all come into fruition. And I think that it happened. I know the guys were hungry and it helped returning a whole bunch of guys, right? So like that core group was there who understood what it was going to take to get themselves over the top. Losing in the sevens uh, fall championships, uh, I think that also helped like keep the guys hungry. Uh, so yeah, I mean, really just the overall attitude from the guys was hungry, ready to take on the challenge. It was kind of a different type of grind. We all like kept thinking about last year and that was just what we started the year with because we knew we had a lot of the same guys there and we just gave extra effort coming into the season, like during the winter workouts, lifting, extra running, everything, so we could start off the season right and want to finish strong. Uh, I just tried to use my voice the best I could. Um, some of the young guys need to know what it takes, and I think they saw it this year. We put in time, effort, and all the above for this. Um, well, we wanted the B and C sides to start putting together wins, and dominant wins. So then we knew we had reserves or maybe future starters to be able to come in and replace us if someone goes down or like the first round of the uh, national tournament where most of the reserves were starters. Uh, it was just doing everything I possibly could and in the right ways too. So like this was a growing experience for me learning how to become a leader because uh, I haven't really been in this position yet to this extent of like I've captained teams before but I haven't captained a group of guys I've been with for three years straight with the highest of highest expectations and we needed to execute or we, we weren't going to be happy with it. I remember going into the Royal Irish game thinking we need this. We need a really good team to challenge our guys. We've been so locked in in practice. We need a test. And then to blow the doors off on a pretty quality side like that, it's kind of eye-opening I think for the coaching staff. It was eye-opening for a lot of the coaches around the country. Um, I know that there were some people looking at that result saying, holy smokes, what do these guys have this year? And, uh, you know, you go from there and you blow out a Bishop Dwanger, who's not a bad team. They're in the tier two for, uh, for, for nationals. Um, then to get the result in the third week against Gonzaga that we did, I know that that kind of really set the platform um, for the team that everybody would be chasing th through the rest of the, the, the season. So it was just a lot of little basic stuff that I felt like um, needed to just get adjusted. But I was super comfortable because like the things that we needed, which were the heart and the personnel, we had. We had the backups we needed. We had the support cast that we needed. And we had the want to win. So the little stuff that we needed to clean up wasn't even a worry. It was like, that will just come by the end of the season. And it did. I think before we left for France, uh, we didn't have as much depth as we do now. And then from there, I think Bez was like, okay, we need to start building depth in like every position so we can prep for those three games we'll have in May. First off, like for the experience for the kids, right? You talk about two different levels of experience. One, what an amazing opportunity for high school kids to go play with their teammates abroad. So I was really happy that we were able to deliver that to those guys this year. And then in terms of quality of opponent, right, I mean, all three of our matches were really good teams. Two of them were pretty tight, and then even getting hammered by a really good team, it's great to bring that humility to the, the guys and to see that higher standard, and there's some lessons that we can take away from that. And then just overall in terms of, of, of the trip, for me it brings about a, a feeling of completion that we, we were able to give these guys everything that our program really has to offer from start to finish. I think it definitely, uh, we bonded as a team over there and uh, just playing those games 
and awesome environments like that, and it was a, it was a once in a lifetime experience. Um, well, in France, they poach cr like crazy; they get over the ball right away. So I think that helped our support later in the season, being able to clear out rocks. And a lot of the issues that we had in those games, we were able to fix, which led to national championship. I think our second game in France against Tours that went down to the wire. It was uh, horrible weather in the mud. And I've never seen us dig that deep before in my four years here. And then that game, I was like, this team's really special. There were some small areas that we felt that uh, uh, needed to be cleaned up. Um, some of our decision making in terms of when we're throwing the wide pass and coach Nick DiPietro would always talk to the guys in boxing metaphors of, listen, you got to work to throw the haymaker. We need the jab, jab, jab. And I think the guys understood that. So we avoided the, the big mistake, the big play that went the other way, uh, fortunately throughout the entirety of, of the season. And I hope I don't jinx ourselves going into the, the state championship here. But our guys really committed to that sort of process of you got to work the hard yards before you can go ahead and make the big play. Uh, I'd say the coaching strategy. Uh, every week we would put in something new, a new play, a new concept. And it, we tried to run it to perfection in practice. And every Friday, I remember, wasn't the best time. It was a pregame practice. But if we missed one thing, we would have to redo the entire play. It's hard to say. I think that. Uh the guys had been primed and it was just this engine that was ready to go ahead and get started. So there was this anticipation and there was almost like this nervous energy around the guys of, we just want to get on the pitch and, and, and go to work. I loved when in that first game, our first group of guys who played against Xavier, they gave us some really quality minutes for the first 40. And then things got a little bit tighter um, when Xavier got a kind of a lucky score in there and uh, off of a, a nice counterattack off of a kick. We brought our, our first side guys on there and they just, the engine was humming right away. There was no rust on it. Man, it, the stakes felt really high because we needed to get everything perfect, and especially with our second group. Like, I haven't really worked with them in the past. So working with them now uh, in those times during practice, like, we would huddle up like, all right, this is a new level of intensity that we're going to reach that we have never reached thus far as a group, and we need to pick it up. And that sense of urgency early on developed into a really good team play and allowed us to do what we, uh, what we did at Nationals, especially in that first game, playing a lot of our subs. It's a lot different than the rest of the year. I mean, we push each other, but like Nationals is like, this is what we've been preparing for the entire year. So you just go 110% the entire time at practice. It's usually a lot hotter guys are sweating and it's just pushing everyone like that extra 10 percent that we've been waiting for the actual preparation stuff's really sweet and actually it makes you feel amazing like it, it's game changing we were watching other teams walk into similar hotels with pizzas candy just hanging out for us it was we'd play our game first thing we do after the game we we wouldn't even really celebrate we would walk over the sideline we would drink a chocolate milk have a peanut butter and jelly and start our stretches as soon as we got our stretches done we'd pack it up go on the bus uh, pick up ice on the way to the hotel, dump the ice into uh, hotel rooms, bathtubs, get ice baths going. Then we would do a rotation of ice bath, pool therapy session run by, run by Coach Sort, and then we would eat for five minutes and do that rotation three times. It was brutal, but afterwards you'd feel so much better. And then we'd follow it up with yoga later that night, and some we also would do meditation. Where, like We would visualize winning, we would visualize success we would start running through the games in our head even before we would get into the game. I think that it's a team effort the whole way through. The kids have to buy into the process. The coaches have to deliver on it. You've got AJ Short or Owen Hunt doing the yoga or the, the recovery. You've got um, all the coaches getting together, uh, uh, Matt Pixton, Joe Zawadny, Brian White, Nick DiPietro, Tim Brofman, all those guys coming up with the game plan for the next match. And then I would be completely remiss if I didn't mention the tremendous parental support that we had. Uh, those sandwiches don't get made by themselves. The milk doesn't get delivered by itself. Um, you've got Coach Short doing the, the post-game stretch immediately. And then, of course, Mo Sizemore attending to every single need of the kid, pre-match, post-match. She's just right on top of them. It's a huge, huge team effort. And without any one of those pieces, it doesn't work. 
I think that was probably the most important part of the entire trip because you can play a good game and then you just go home and lay down and then you can't walk for the next two days. But like going straight from the game to take care of your body in the pool, eating, yoga, sleeping right, drinking a lot of water, like that is what set us up to feel good to start the next game and then the game after that. I think overall our kids were helped by playing a Gonzaga because it's a known quantity. Uh, we had faced them seven times in the last four years. Uh, our kids knew that we could beat that side. Uh, at the same time, I'm a big kind of believer in hubris and stats and you don't want to be overconfident because just because you've beaten them in the past because you will be humbled very, very quickly. Uh, additionally, they've been gunning for you. You know, they're a proud group of guys and to have lost to us a few times in a row and they get to more easily identify the mistakes that they've made, that allows them to close that gap much more easily than it is for us to widen the gap. It's harder for us to see our mistakes when you win. Uh, I, I love playing against Gonzaga because they always, they don't like us, so it's a heated game. It's like playing Eds, it's a rivalry. So I, I was just pumped for the game, no matter if it's middle of the season, national championship, it was the same excitement level. Not too nervous, but once the game started, I could feel it in my chest where it started going. So it was really exciting leading up to the game. Um, heading into the championship game, I guess uh, it's always going to be nervous, but uh, it's always harder to beat a team twice in a season. And we got that chance to prove that we can do whatever we can. We can do whatever we can accomplish. accomplish. I think a lot of people don't know this, but we, but the kids really were the ones who did the preparation for that particular match. Coaches were more of a resource to them. Uh, we thought that the best way to get the game plan bought in by the rest of the players was really for the, our leadership group to come up with the game plan. So our chiefs, uh, Marty Lenahan, Bobby Voth, Jack Dulick, and John Reddy, stayed up pretty late on that Friday night in order to watch film and come up with what they thought was going to be the most successful route of attack uh, with Gonzaga. And then they bounced some questions off of our coaching group uh, in order to collectively kind of determine what the plan would be. So really for me, it was a weird, um, it was a little bit different, right? Because normally uh, I'm, I'm very much involved in exactly what that game plan is going to be. And for this one, uh, we we let go of the reins a little bit and kind of let that group take over and, and take full ownership of, of what we were going to be doing. Gonzaga tried to have a Cinderella story of like the first time that we played them as a squad freshman year, that was the only time they beat us. They beat us the first game freshman year and we've played them five or six times past that and we beat them every single time. And we could see developing this wonderful Cinderella story of oh, we haven't beaten them in years, but finally we reached our way to the national championship and we finally beat them. And our mindset was like, we're not allowing a Cinderella story. That's not going to happen. So playing them earlier in the season, we felt like would give them some fire, but it also gave us something to expect because we knew they were going to be, they had the same personnel, but they were going to be a different team as a whole because they were going to be so much more fired up. I would definitely say it was the scrum in our end with about five minutes left and uh, it was their put in and we just gave our last push and we stole it and then it ball got out wide to Jack and Jack, I think it was Jack that ran it down the sideline and then we got a penalty at, at their end of the field. Going off of that PK kick in such a big moment of the game, what's going on through your head? I gotta make this damn kick. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta hit this because I've, uh, the whole season, like if the if the kick's on the sidelines, like, oh, I'll nail it. Like, no worries. If the kick's down the middle, I get nervous because it's too easy. Like, I've, I've missed more down the middle kicks this season than I have on the sidelines. So I'm sitting here, I'm like, just please not this time. Don't. So everything's concentrated. Usually down the middle, I get lazy sometimes. I'll keep my shoulders and my head up, uh, and that's when I'll shank it. But this is like, that's the most concentrated I've ever been on a kick. And you know, like, I don't even look up at the ball when I kick. I like, I do my whole form, I'm going up, and as soon as I make contact with the ball, everything feels perfect. It comes off my foot perfect, and I'm like, thank God, thank God. Ball went right through, and I was like, all right, I, I think we've won this. It didn't really set in right away, because I was like on the ground by myself. 
I just got like drilled. So I was still laying on the ground and I was like really confused on what was going on. And I see everyone like running out on the field. I'm like, shoot, we just won a national championship. So I run over to Bobby, hug him. It was super exciting. Oh, I started bawling. I started crying. I just, the emotions have built up from two years straight. Not only the bent up emotions of last year's loss, seeing how those seniors reacted and me being have to be like a strong support role of those seniors. Cause I felt like I myself wouldn't be able to let out those emotions of like anger and sadness of losing. I felt like I had to support my seniors. Then the amount of morning skills, the amount of after school training, the unlimited amount of hours that I put into this and that the team and the guys put into it, I was just so happy for our group. And I think I was also so emotional because of this group of guys and how special they were. If we weren't as close, that national championship doesn't mean half as much. Uh... I think that somebody once told me that Father Welsh uh, had, had told the leadership of, of the school like um, at some point in the, the early 90s that if you're not changing, you're dead. As soon as you stop looking for the, the next way that you can get better, you're dead. And I, I view our program in very much the same way that um, even with the success that we've had, there's always areas that we can be getting better. There's areas that we can identify to, um, uh, to do in a, in a stronger way. So at this, while we look at the, the, the success and, and all of this, we're still gonna be critical of, of the areas that we can be doing better. They've put their, their stamp on, on that jersey and in you know, our club history book, uh, which I think a lot of people know, we hand that out to the guy who wears that jersey. I heard from a lot of our alumni uh, who wore those jerseys back in 2014 when we, wore, when we won our first state championship. I know it meant something to those guys. I like to think that the guys who will come after the class of 2022 will, uh, will look to, to live up to the standard that those guys have put on that jersey as well. And then in terms of the class itself, you know, there's, there's no forgetting those guys, right? They, it's a really, really special group. They will always have their place uh, in the lore of St. Ignatius rugby, and nobody will ever be able to take any of this away from them. Bobby Voth once said at the beginning of our freshman year, he thinks this team's something special. I think that was a little bit of an understatement. The reason we're here is because of the class of 2020. I think without them uh, going into that season, we beat the number one team in the nation, which was Gonzaga. And I think that put us on the maps. And that year we had, I think it was four sophomores playing that game. Me, Marty, um, Dulick. No, I mean, it's just the pieces that you can't really tangibly talk about. The, the feelings of camaraderie and the sport of rugby. There's a certain aspect of it that you only get when you play. There's those, the environment of practice, there's the environment during games, the environment after games that like, you don't find in any other sport. And the number one thing that you talk to people about that stands out about rugby is that camaraderie. That I don't know why that's the word that pops up. And I don't know how the sport of rugby made that culture in it, but they did. And I'm so thankful for my guys and I'm so happy we were able to execute and finish the job.